You got to inject this into my veins. This is incredible right now. Ain't nothing but a gangster party. Brother, we were here last year when the New York Giants uh, were here, and I don't know yeah. if just the other New York team is, is, is more uh, ticked off than this New York team, but there is something about what we are looking at which is this Hilton tailgate party, which is growing and growing oh, yeah. and growing, and the vibes are impeccable. It's looking a little bit like Christmas with the red and the green. Oh, my I mean, goodness. Mostly red, a little bit of green. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. It sure is. It sure is. And, and I mean, the, the, the dancing and, and the drinking and the wallflowers. me and you. We got the wallflowers, <laughs> oh, but yeah. I mean, oh my goodness, this yeah. is a good looking crowd right now. Great crowd and people are flowing in. And you know what? There's nothing quite like week one, but the only thing better than a week one is a week one, nah, 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 a Monday night <laughs> football <laughs> week one. And uh, wow, folks are getting ready. They're getting lit. Uh, the good lady, yeah. so to speak. You know, you know. You know. Thank, thank you. you ba -da, ba -da, there it, it is. It's <laughs> got da 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 Ba, 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 <laughs> ba, ba. Wait for it. Da 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 da. Okay. Okay. Uh, eight eight eight. Let's go. Eight 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 eight. Nine five seven. <laughs> How many eights? Nine five seven. Too many eights, but whatever. Eight, eight, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, again, again. If you want to just scream and yell about the Niners, you go to the front of the line. We could sit here and be like, "So Nick Bosa, we think he needs uh, 13 and a half sacks this year." Whatever. Okay. Let's hear from you. Come on, Noah in San Francisco. LFG, what do you got? <laughs> Come on, Noah. Hello, guys, how you doing? We're, you we're doing, so guys? good. Awesome, Noah. We're so good. Oh, man. I'm so pumped today. What you guys just asked, like, would you rather guarantee one in eight years or, or maybe in, like, three years with this group? Um, I'm going to take the maybe just because I love these players so much. And there's this quote from a uh, Roger Kahn book, The Boys of Summer, and it's like you rejoice with a team in victory, but you fall in love with a team in defeat. And it's been twice now we've watched these guys like Debo and Kittle and Fred Warner and Nick Bosa in particular almost win the Super Bowl, and I just really want it so bad for them. Like, And I'm really rooting for that group of players, and you know, like there's questions, I think, whether this team has gotten better or not in the offseason. I think what they do have is a higher drive than ever to do this, and I'm just so pumped for them. Noah, I'm with you, man, and thank you very much for the call. Like, there's three names in particular, and this isn't to rank them or whatever, because Trent and Christian, even though acquired through trade, are, I think are meaningful to 49er fans as well. But there's three guys, and, and this is the way I think about a Niners star, because you could have like a Jeff Garcia or a Frank Gore, and I could go on and on, of players who are like, you really left your mark. You left your mark, but... But, right, like you didn't win a Super Bowl, and that's kind of reserved for a different level of a Niner legacy. And it feels to me like George Kittle, Debo Samuel, and Fred Warner are three people who have left a mark that should be, could be, Super Bowl ring level. And I, I, I just, that's, that's how I feel. I would be very, very disappointed if somehow some way those guys are no longer 49ers and they don't have a ring yeah and i get that and you know it certainly it would put them among the the pantheon as i was telling steiny earlier about the pantheon of, of all-time greats and you think about patrick willis and joe yeah. staley yeah. No, you mentioned frank gore and navarro bowman and even you know Justin Smith, who wasn't, of course, uh, an original 49er, but he did so much for the team. And you can think about all of the other 49ers who were here for a long time who didn't get that ring. And do you think less about them? No, but you do feel like Joe Staley in particular, it would have been nice for him to get a ring. And he had the chance in New Orleans against in Baltimore in the Harbaugh Bowl, and he didn't get it done. They didn't get it done. And so you feel bad about it. But this group is a little bit like that, especially you mentioned Debo and Kittle, you know, guys who have been here for a long time, and Fred Warner as well, who hopefully will be here for years to come. But 
if you get you know through this window and you get through these chances and, and they don't get one and ultimately they retire, then yeah, you'll feel bad about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's interesting the names you brought up. The only difference being like, yeah, they had a shot. They went to a Super Bowl. Uh, Beyonce turned the lights out and it almost happened, but it didn't. But these guys, here's there's two things that I feel are different with them. A, they've been there twice. They've been to that mountaintop twice and got knocked off at both times in disappointing fashion with second-half leads. And secondly, I just think this. I just think that this 49er team is better than those 49er teams. Like, I never felt when they went against Baltimore, you may have been like, they got a shot to win a Super Bowl. This group, I look at, I'm like, you should win a Super Bowl. Like, yeah, this to that. me is the best team in football and just hasn't shown it in its biggest moments yet. I see that part of it. And, you know, the, the Kaepernick team that went to the Super Bowl was a little bit of a, not a one-off, but what he was doing to the league at that time was something we had never seen. Yep. And he was such a difference maker. And they rode that momentum. And Harbaugh had everybody all ginned up and, you know, quietly Harbaugh back at it again. Want to know who's got it better than him? Nobody yeah. has it better it than him. It was weird to see that chant inside the Chargers locker room. It was. That was weird. At the same time, <laughs> I am not surprised they went out nope. there and won. No. And it, I mean, that's what Harbaugh does. But you think about that team at that time and it, it felt less sustainable than this does. I mean, you had a quarterback on a rookie deal. You've got maybe the best roster in football and you're humming. You've been there for the last five years. You've been there at the penultimate weekend at least. And so, yeah, you absolutely should be there. Um, let's keep going. How about uh, Rich in Fremont, one of our favorites? Hey, Rich, thank you for calling Willie and Debbie. What's good? Hey, man, the whole day is good. Let's keep it real, man. I'm still feeling electric from that red and gold summit I went to. Got to hang out with you brothers. It was nice. But, hey, let's keep it real. I got my prediction right now. Let's go. 10, Niners, baby. 23 to 10, I like it. Yeah, no, and, and, and you're feeling kind of that defensive energy that you saw around the league yesterday, aren't you, Rich? Yeah, I am, I am. And i tell you something else. I expect, I expect, I expect, I expect, and I don't want to show up, I expect our defense to deliver. It's going to mess up Bobby Fowler that he never should have left the line Because he's there now, guess what? You're the enemy, and that's just the way it is. So let's keep it going, brothers. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, enjoy it, Rich. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I, you like a defensive struggle tonight, too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, partly on what we've seen throughout uh, week one so far, but I also look at these two offenses, and Brandon Ayuk is not going to play the full game. He right. probably is going to end up playing about half the game. I don't know what the snap count will be, but it's going to be somewhat limited. McCaffrey was limited in camp. He didn't play at all in the preseason, and Trent Williams didn't play. So I look at an offense that's probably going to start a little bit slowly. And the Jets, same thing. You have a quarterback who hasn't played in 364 days. And when he did play, he played four snaps. And I look at a Niner defense that's better than last year. It's a defense that I think is going to control things in this game. I like a very low-scoring game. Today. Yeah, I, I, what you're saying makes a lot of sense on paper. I'll say this, though. I think that, like, defense ahead of the offense thing that we're all feeling having watched the first week of football is not going to be sustainable. This is my other reaction to the new kickoff rule. I think scoring is going to go up. And I do think on the down low, that's what the NFL was looking for because they've essentially made, they've made it so that that kick through the end zone just comes even further out. Yeah. And, and so you're watching field position around the league just got better with these new rules and that's going to lead to games like we saw with the Eagles and the Packers down in Brazil where I thought both both offenses were mistake prone yeah both of them looked wobbly yet what do we get 63 points in the game eventually still. eventually eventually yeah. Although it was a high-scoring first half, too. It not was, the but Eagles. You, you had two Eagle turnovers that led to six points. And that's where, I mean, that game could yeah. have been 55 to 49, right? It, well, you had wide receivers popping off all over the place. Yeah. Jaden Reed goes crazy. Yeah, he did. AJ Randy. Brown yeah, goes crazy. Devontae Smith was solid. And then, obviously, there was Saquon, not a wide receiver. But, it, it, you know, he, he goes crazy as well. You had a lot of skill position players doing their thing and uh, and i thought field position had a, a big part of it and you're not wrong turnovers yeah, led to yeah. even better field position but i think eventually you're going to get to that once once offenses get in sync most of them just aren't there yet and i don't think that that will be the case tonight i mean you're looking at, at one offense the niners that didn't really 
fully play together. No Trent Williams, no Ayuk, and McCaffrey didn't play either. And the other side, you have a quarterback who hasn't played football. Yeah. He played four snaps 364 days ago. And beyond that, and you mentioned it in the crossover, and you were right to do so, he had a bad year. The yes. year before in yes. Green Bay, it was a down year. He was not great. They were not good. They didn't make the playoffs. So it's been damn near three years since he's actually played good football. This is how, if you're a Bay Area sports fan, this is all you need to know. The last time Aaron Rodgers was good, so were the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. Oh, God. That long? Same year. 2021? 2021. Jeez. And the last time he was good, didn't the Niners go there and beat them in the snow? Sure did. Yeah, that was his sure last. Game. That was his last good game. Hufunga. That's right, the Hufunga game. Yeah, yeah. And that was 2022, but it was the 2021 season. Still one of my favorite, like Joe f- Buck did. Well, but one of my Joe Buck on. It's one of my favorite dumb fan moments, just because um, I remember that football game and uh, sitting around the living room with the kids and we're watching this game and Jimmy Garoppolo just can't get anything going and my kids who just walked in will back me up on this. Okay. As they lined up for that punt, I go, man, we need a pump block or something. <laughs> we got to do something to get something going. And then, boom, Hufunga. And the, Hufunga, Niners, have, and the Niners are tied. Yes. And they go on to win the game. That was one of, oh, my gosh, I'll never forget that game. That's great. Um, how about Sean in Fremont? Let's do Sean, Sean. What are you doing, Sean? So, uh, yeah, guys, I'm excited. I um, <clears throat> kind of like this. I think it's going to be low scoring, but I got, I got a contact in Reno telling me minus four. Do you want to get any juice on the game? I think the Niners are going to cover. Niners by a tutty at least. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I like Niners Sean, by 10. I like, I I like, like Niners it. by 10 tonight. I don't mean that I would bet that. Oh, boy. I just, that yeah. my, my my final score is Niners by 10. Well, I hate to give away my pick too early well, because, oh, we all, wanna, we all want to fade the Dibbers because, oh, Dibbers is yeah, we, Captain Loserville. You go ahead and fade me all you want later today. I'm coming for you. I'll have my pick, and that'll be coming up here in about an hour and yeah, a half. By the way, uh, a set aside is when we play fade the Dibbers and the Niners are in the game. Because one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to pick against them, and we're just going to be mad at you for picking against them, or you're going to pick for them. And, and you're going to be mad that I of, picked well, for none them. None of us are going to want to fade you because nobody wants to pick the Jets plus four and a half tonight. The whole idea is that I lose all the time. So whatever I think, you go against it. So if you really not, want to make money. Not all the time, All dippers. the time. Don't get, That's, I'm, don't get thank sensitive. You, I'm not sensitive at all. No. This whole bit was built on my failure, and you know, what all y'all are losers dibs, i'm the winner dibs, of it. yeah dibs most of the time not That's all it. the time your don't boy, feel that your boys one and one most of the your time your boy's been hot this well, year and He's what happens one one. if you go one and one constantly you lose then because the you're dies. playing <laughs> yes the bid dies. but well yeah but you're also <laughs> yeah. paying you're the paying juice, vegas paying the, the juice. juice yeah all right eight at eight nine five seven nine five five seventy how about uh is that fred x in oakland is that what i'm seeing hey fred what you doing Oh, man, we just got our work. Appreciate you, Doc. Thank you for calling. Yeah, what's up, Fred? Oh, no, I just wanted to talk about the success of the Niners. I don't remember them being successful since I was in elementary. Well, they've been, I mean, they've been, you know, I don't know how you measure success, but last five years, they played a lot of playoff games, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's not the goal, though. I thought the goal was to win the Super Bowl. Right, it yeah, is. Yeah, no doubt, Fred X. That's always the goal. Yeah, well, if you don't accomplish your goal, that means you're a loser, right? Uh, no, I disagree with that as firmly as I possibly could. I mean, Fred, have you ever had a goal and not achieved it? Did you, like, sit in front of the mirror the next day and be like, I'm a loser, I suck? Like, come on, man, life is more contextual than that. Yes, yes, I have. And, that, and being a loser, it will give you the drive to be harder and be a winner. Well, I don't worry about, Fred, thanks. I don't worry about the Niners' drive at all. I also, that's just, to me, that's, and I know that that's a thought out there for a lot of people. I think that that's just black and white thinking at too firm of a level for me in professional sports. Um, it, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold people to uh, either you win the whole thing or you suck and you're a loser. That's absurd. That's just the way I look at it. And I agree with that mentality because 31 teams will not win the Super Bowl this year. And so of the other 
31 teams that don't win the Super Bowl, are they all they equally all losers? losers? Like, no. No, I mean, like, Carolina, right now, you could look at Carolina and say, oh, wow. My I God. mean, in Minis- I mean, not Minnesota, but the New York Giants, they look like Brutal. they're going to struggle. There's some teams already that you could look at and say, all right, you're probably going to be losers the most of the time in this year. But for me, if you make it to the Super Bowl and you don't win, and I said it last year, that's where the bar is. And that's where the bar is this year again. Get to the last weekend of the year, be one of the last four teams playing, and then you can decide from there how you want to judge this team. Absolutely. Look, it doesn't change the goal. It doesn't change the bar. It doesn't change the expectation. Um, That's literally the basis of the conversation right now, that if the likes of George Kittle, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, if these guys don't win a ring in their nine or ten year, I would be devastated. I would be devastated for them. I would be devastated for us. That is absolutely the hope. Um, I'll never, you're never going to hear me call those people losers. That's, I mean, that's just not going to come out of my mouth. No, and that's not, I mean, for me, that's not the way I look at it. And, you know, ultimately, you can only be in so many big games and, you know, so few teams get to be in that spot where you're one of the last teams remaining. And they've been that team for the last five years. Um, let's keep it going. How about Ozark Bob, who's calling from Missouri? Ozark Bob, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? I've been waiting for this day all dang season. I'm yeah. so ready for the Niners to hey, put in work tonight. What I you can't think? believe you know him. Oh, I think we're going to do really good. I mean, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he hasn't played in over two and a half years. I mean, God, the last time he played, he was a shell of himself. So I, I have all the momentum in the world on our Niners D to put in work today. Um, I'll just say this, and Ozark Bob, thank you very much. I agree. I do have questions or maybe, if you will, kind of anxiety a little bit in terms of what the 49er offense is going to look like tonight. However, if I had one prediction that I really feel good about, it's that Aaron Rodgers is going to struggle. I think that this is it. like he's a pro. He's such a vet. He's seen it all. You're not going to overwhelm him with the moment or, 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 or anything like that. But um, the energy that's going to be in that building, what his body has left, combined with the personnel on the field on the Niners' defensive side, which has something to prove. That group is going to play like they've got something to prove. I just think that's going to be uh, – uh, uh, I think it's going to be tough sledding. I think the Jets are going to have a really hard time getting to 20 points tonight. I think it's – for me, anyway, it's the rust is the biggest factor because Aaron Rodgers didn't play in the preseason, and he only played four snaps last year, and so he hasn't really played – with this team at all he played with them for four snaps last year so even the cohesiveness of being a part of a team if you were coming off of you know a season where you'd already played with them fine but you're not coming off a season where you already played with this team you haven't played with them at all and so the rust combined with the newness of being a part of a new team that's all going to lead them to i believe be a little sluggish uh we got another fred we just had fred x how about fred regular um fred in richmond what's going on man thank you for calling hey uh thanks for having me on man i was just calling because that fred x he wasn't no niner fan i don't know what the heck he was talking about because the niners are are fire right now and i just want everybody to know that nick bosa is going to be defensive player of the year this year and he's going to start off with three sacks tonight on washed up aaron Rodgers. thanks for having me on y'all Fred, appreciate Thank you. it. The real yeah. Fred, please well, stand up. The, please, please stand, stand up. up. Thank please you. stand up. Thank I you. like. I, I like what he said. I mean, obviously, if Nick Bosa has a huge night, I, I think that that's going to bode very, very well for the way this thing all plays out. But yeah, just to go back to what he's referring to, if you're just joining us and you missed the previous call from about ten minutes ago, um, that that black and white thinking, and you and I have talked about it a lot. Like either you win the Super Bowl or you're a loser. Uh, look, look at this crowd. Look at this space. Look at these people. Look at the number of jerseys. Look at the dance. Look at the excitement that this has created. How are you going to call these people losers? How are you going to do that? How are, are everybody here showing up to watch losers? Come on, man. You know, and I don't even, like, by the way, I'm as excited as all get out for this game tonight. But week one 
is week one. Right. I tell you what's actually riding on tonight. The Super Bowl and the playoffs and the division do not ride on tonight. What rides on tonight is sort of the the sound of the start of the season because I do think that if the Niners don't look right tonight, you're immediately going to get people point to all of the things that happened in sure, August of course. that were frustrating, and they're going to say, this is the manifestation of that. And that would be a manifestation sensation. You're, you're and, welcome. I'll let you right to it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so saying. much. And I do think that in many ways it's right to draw those conclusions. If Brandon Ayuk can't play a full game, and he won't, and if Trent Williams looks a little sluggish, yep. and he might, whatever look happens tonight, if you lose, you're going to point fingers at a lot of different things. And now if they come out and they win, then you go, oh, boy, the IU thing, genius. They played it great. And Trent, yeah, <laughs> and McCaffrey, go ahead and skip camp, all the rest of it. It's a results-based game. I do think that regardless of how they do tonight, the Niners are set up in a good spot for the first part of the season to kind of ease their way into it. You obviously want to win every game that you can, but the schedule does get tougher down the road. I'm going to point to your results-based comment, though, and agree with you. And to me, that means this. If the Niners win the game tonight, go home happy. Don't do what we were doing at the beginning of last year. Remember, it wasn't just did they win, right. how did they win? Are we going to line up the phone lines tomorrow and be like, but Kittle only had three catches. I know they won by ten. Exactly. But you get, like, that's the thing that I remember from last year that I think at minimum early in the year, get rid of that thought. Watch around the league. Look what happened yesterday. Look at the surprises. Yeah. The New England Patriots are one and no. You know, you look, look at George Jordan Love is hurt. Puka Nakua is on IR. That is now confirmed, by the way. He will miss at least weeks two, three, four, and five for the Los Angeles Rams. Jake Ferguson, we haven't heard yet, but that he's going to be out. I almost guarantee it for the Cowboys. Things change in an instant, and so I, I just look at tonight and uh, give me more points than the other team, and I'm going to go home and sleep real good. Yeah, and that's how we should always look at it because the NFL is so tough, and it's so difficult to win, and it's difficult to make a playoff berth and make a playoff run and get to the Super Bowl and all the rest of it. It's not a birthright. Just because your roster is good and your coach is good, it doesn't mean that you automatically get to be a Super Bowl team. I want you to look at that video right there. You see what that is right there? Yeah. You see that? You know who that is? That's Ricky Pearsall. You're right damn right there. it is. You're damn right it is. With if the you, roller bag. If you want something else to fire you up, obviously Ricky Pearsall will not be playing football tonight, but Ricky Pearsall is in the building walking one foot in front of the other with no bandages, no anything, smile on his face, and a little hey, how you doing to security as he walks into the building tonight. Nice. And that should make everybody feel good. Ricky Pearsall. Um, just a week ago, his life in his hands, yeah. and now he's going to be there with his teammates tonight watching ball. Pretty awesome. Awesome to see Ricky in, and, you know, you, you would expect him to watch it from a suite, but just to even have him in the building is pretty awesome.